Okay, so let's see the uh, closer relation between classical algorithm and clustering. So let me start by talking about instead of just finding two groups. Okay, let me talk about the hierarchical clustering. Okay, let's say that this is the input points we have. Okay, now if you, if this is the points you're given, then in, visually we immediately see. Okay, this one should have three clusters. Okay, so this is a cluster one, a cluster two, and a cluster three. Okay, you have the three groups between um, them. Okay. Okay, so this um, data set has um, you know, three groups. But what if this is the, um, so this is the previous case, okay? What if this right-hand size are the data that were given, okay? Now, what we see is that, fact, at the lower level, we see that these are all different clusters, right? These are all different groups, okay? But if I stand really far away, look at all those data sets, I see that at a higher level, I get three bigger clusters. So this, this three smaller cluster actually form this bigger cluster grouping. And the same here and the same here, okay? If I continue to move back even further at a bigger scale, then at the next level, I see that these two are actually closer to each other. So at the next level, I have two big, if I want to um, divide my data only to two groups, then this is the choice, namely, this is one group, this is the other group, okay, right? So in other words, how many cluster you have, and uh, it really um, depends on um, at what scale you're looking at the data, okay? So if you just want to, you want a very coarse level, I said, I just want to know what are two biggest the groups in this data, then I should return, this is a group one, this is a group two, okay? But if you say that, oops, uh, if you say that, okay, what is some, if I want to have three groups of the data, then these are the best three groups. This is one, this is two, this is another one. We see this is natural um, uh, set three groups, okay? But if I go even further down, then I see naturally I actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At the next level, I have eight groups, okay? so. Um, there, there's this concept of that um, I could do the clustering at a different levels, okay, uh, different cost levels. And um, this is so-called hierarchical clustering. In particular, I can summarize what we have earlier into this so-called hierarchical clustering tree, okay? What do I have here? So let's say that this ABC are the lowest eight clusters, okay? So at the lowest level, these are the clusters we have, okay? We have um, eight clusters, okay? But at the next level, ABC first the group into, so this corresponds to this group, okay? And the DE corresponds to this group at the next level, okay? And, um, uh, this corresponds to this group. Okay, so basically this is what we um, uh, what we have. Okay, so then you can say that, okay, at the next level, I have yet another grouping, which is this group contains D, F, G, H. That's the one here. Okay, and then in the highest level, I have only one group is where every day, every, every, all the nodes correspond to one group, okay? So this grouping can be done at different levels, okay? This is called a hierarchical clustering. I'm grouping them in a hierarchical manner. And this can be encoded into this tree structure, okay? More precisely, you look at this tree and you take any subtree, say this node and a subtree, this give you a grouping at some level, okay? So this, remember, give me this, orange ABC grouping, okay? This purple one here, give me this, this, um, this subtree corresponds to this grouping, okay? All right. So um, now, how do you find, how do you compute such um, uh, uh, hierarchical clustering? Now note that once you have the hierarchical clustering, you can also just get the flat clustering that we said earlier. So in this case, if you want to find two 
cluster, I can just return this two, right? And if you want to find a three cluster, then I can return this. Okay, so from hierarchical clustering, you can re, uh, it's more powerful than this uh, clustering for fixed the uh, case that we said earlier. You can choose for different case. Okay, all right. So um, it turned out that um, there are whole family of algorithms called uh, um, agglomerative uh, clustering method, which kind of built this clusters bottom up. Okay, and I'm going to tell you one which is the most popular one called a single linkage clustering. Okay, so I'm going to describe the idea here and then you will see the resemblance. Okay, the idea is follows. Okay, so at the beginning, I say that everyone is its own cluster. Okay, so here in this example, I have seven points. At the beginning, I have seven cluster. Okay, that's the most refined level. You have seven cluster, everyone is its own cluster. Okay, then what I'm going to do is that um, I what is a grouping? What is a cluster? It's basically points that are very close to each other, right? So I'm going to keep merging clusters, okay, based on the nearest neighbor, the cheapest way to, to merge them. What do I mean by that? Okay, I say that out of the seven cluster, what is the cheapest way to reduce one cluster? Well, that is basically a connected five and a six. Why is this the cheapest? because these two nodes have the smallest distance between them, right? So in first step, if I want six cluster, then I need to merge P5 and P6, okay? Now, if I want to say, I want to further merge another, get the next grouping, kill one of the cluster, what is the next the cheapest way to do so? I want to merge the closest possible together, right? So that, in other words, you're saying that, okay, now look at the different ways to, to merge them. So, well, if I merge P1 and P2, I only need to pay this cost. Oops. Uh, hold on for a second. What happened? I'm sorry, I lost the screen here, which I need to find. Oh. Okay, so here, so if I, if I merge this two, uh, so the distance to, to, to kill this, to merge them is basically the distance between these two nodes. Okay, so um, if I, I can also connect the, these two nodes and the, the cost that to, to reduce that component here will be the distance here and so on. So what I figure out is that the cheapest way to reduce another component is basically find what is the smallest distance between the point from one cluster to a point in a different cluster. Okay, in other words, now I'm going to look at among all the possible edges, what is the next the cheapest edge to reduce a component? Okay, and in this case, the next one will be this two. And the next one probably will be this two. So this is the one, two, three, and then um, maybe this is three. This is probably the fourth smallest, okay? And the, now this edge is also short, but this one doesn't kill a component anymore because at this point, this three are already grouped together, okay? So the next the cheapest way to connect, merge this component, I basically look at what is the cheapest way to connect this group with this group? Or um, in that case, I can basically consider all these edges, this one, this one, this one, all these four possible edges. And the cheapest way is probably this edge because that's the uh, closest distance. So the next, the cheapest one is this, okay? And the last one will be the cheapest way to connect this group with this group. So this is four, five. The last one is to connect any nodes from this group to any nodes here. So again, look for the cheapest edge with the smallest distance between them. In that case, it's probably this one, okay? So the final output would basically be 
this. Okay, so I basically started with nobody, everyone's in its own cluster. And I keep merging these clusters based on the nearest distance between points from, from their members. So cheapest weight, cheapest distance between um, points from two clusters to merge them. Okay, I always find the cheapest way to merge them till in the end I have a single cluster. Okay, so it turned out that this, this is so-called single linkage because I keep um, looking at the uh, single link connecting two clusters to merge them, okay? And um, this actually give us, uh, so here I'm showing the order one, the first edge to edge, at the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, the sixth one. So this is the edges that I'm going to add to merge these components, okay? And this actually give us a hierarchical clustering as well. It says that P1, P2 is the first to add, and then P3, P4, is the next to add as a P, uh, a P5, P6 is the first, the second is P1, P2, and then P3, P4. And then the next edge to add is basically P2, P3 to merge these two groups, merge the group of P1, P2 and the group of P3, P4. So this corresponds to P2, P3 edge, okay? And then the, here to merge the P6, P7 is to merge the group P5, P6 with the vertex P7, okay? In the end, this long edge P3, P7 merges these two components, okay? So this is corresponding half of clustering, okay? So the bottom line is that um, this merging tell me that which two groups, uh, which components need to be collapsed first, okay? And the way that I decide how to merge them is by looking at the shortest, the cheapest edge to connect the two uh, components, okay? And now you think about what we did, this algorithm, okay? This is exactly what we did in uh, Kraskow's algorithm. Okay, we basically says at the beginning, all the nodes are not connected. Then I start to look for the cheapest way to merge them. And how do I find the cheapest way? I simply go through every edge. Okay, because if the edge connects two components, then that means that it's the cheapest way to merge two components. Okay, and if the edge creates a cycle, then this edge is not um, uh, connecting anything, so throw it out. Okay, so I keep doing this till that all of them are in the same um, component. Okay, so the classical algorithm exactly corresponds to the single linkage clustering process that I just described. Okay, and it can actually be used to output this, this tree. Okay, so I don't know what happened with this. I couldn't erase this, um, this words anymore, unfortunately. Okay, um, okay. Um, so, um, Basically, um, the takeaway message from this lecture is that, okay, um, number one, how Kraskow's algorithm work, okay? So Kraskow algorithm is yet another greedy algorithm similar to the Prim's algorithm, but it's different in the way how it adds the grow the partial tree, okay? So in Kraskow algorithm, we sort all the edges from small to large weights, okay, and then, um, uh, Add them one by attempt to add them one by one to the minimal spanning tree to, to our to, to the output tree and throw it away if it causes a cycle because we know it's not valid, otherwise, we'll keep it. That's it. Okay, so both algorithm, Prim's algorithm, the uh, classical algorithm can be implemented in this time, but for the classical algorithm, we didn't uh, describe how to really implement the. Um, uh, the step to check whether two nodes form a cycle or not, which is to check whether in the same connect components or not. Okay, we assume that we have a data structure to do that. Okay, with that data structure, we can implement the classical algorithm this time. Same for the Prince algorithm. Prince algorithm can be done in B plus C log B using a heap. Okay, all right. And the second uh, message that I want you to remember, even though that um, the um, we didn't. Uh, define the clustering average uh, uh, problem and the um, hierarchical clustering output very precisely, okay? 
But what I want you to remember is that the cross-source algorithm can be used to produce the so-called single linkage clustering, okay? The Sahiato clustering, okay? In particular, it actually is exactly what happens in the single linkage cluster because the classical algorithm merge components one by one using cheapest uh, uh, edge possible, okay? And um, alternatively, if you want to, let me actually write it here. Alternatively, if you want to, to obtain best K clusters, what we can uh, are formed by endpoints. Alternatively, what we can do is that we first create the distance graph spanned by P and then compute its MST P, okay? So you compute the minimal spanning tree spanning all these points using the distance graph, okay? Then remove K minus one edges from MST with largest weights, okay? So this is uh, alternatively, if I just want to get the K, best K clusters, okay, I can use the minimal spanning tree algorithm here. I can perform the minimal spanning tree either using classical or Prince algorithm, okay? So then just then remove the K largest edge, that's it, okay? So there's a relation between the minimal spanning tree uh, with uh, clustering, okay? Now I hope this also give you an um, uh, idea. Uh, this also serve as an example for you to see that, um, so for the clustering problem at the beginning, um, since we didn't um, have any concept of this graph algorithm, okay? And to solve this clustering problem in the first class, we model that as optimization problem and we solve it in a very naive way, and super inefficient, which takes exponential time, okay? But now, no, it turned out that for that specific formulation of the cluster algorithm, okay? We can actually using minimal sp spanning tree to help us to solve that. And the time complexity reduced from exponential time to now only E log B time, which is um, almost nearly, okay, it's much more efficient than exponential time, okay? So this hopefully gives you an example to show the power of designing the good, designing good algorithms, okay? Because you can really improve uh, time complexity to solve um, data analysis problems, okay? And uh, that's what I want to talk about today. Um, again, um, uh, Thursday's class is uh, converted to office hour, okay? And um, the, for those who take a redemption exam, that will be this Saturday. Well, the take home um, last uh, super homework will be due next week, okay? That's all, thanks.